Montserrat is a volcanic island in the Leeward Islands of the Caribbean. Unlike many of the drier Caribbean islands further to the west, Montserrat has high levels of rain, which supports lush, tropical rainforest. But in the middle of this beautiful Emerald Isle, there lies an active volcano. In 1995, the sleeping volcano awoke. Eruptions over the following years devastated the island. At the time, around 12,000 people lived on the island, mainly in the capital, Plymouth. But tragically, it was here where the full force of the eruption fell. The Montserratians evacuated the city. 7,000 were forced to abandon their homes and leave the island, mostly to the UK. Plymouth today is like a modern Pompeii. Two meters of ash fell, and the buildings are submerged to roof height. Possessions still lie where they are abandoned and even papers were preserved in the sterile ash. Tragically, Plymouth is now a ghost town and her empty abandoned buildings are home to no one. Now only the northern third of the island is safe to inhabit, the only part of the island outside the exclusion zone, far enough from the volcano to be safe from further volcanic activity and around 5,000 Montserratians still live here. The volcano remains active and steams quietly in the centre of the island. But the resilient and resourceful community is rebuilding the infrastructure of the island and their homes and lives. But what was the impact on the wildlife of the island? Montserrat is home to 10 species of bats. Many of these lost their fur in the aftermath of the eruptions due to the acidity of the ash. And many of the fruit-eating bats also lost their teeth due to the abrasive action of the ash covering the fruit they ate. And much of the vegetation of the volcano was devastated and the slopes were left barren. But the ash was rich in minerals and paradoxically, the island's forests that survived the eruption have recovered vigorously and glow with life. Destruction is so often linked with creation in the natural world. And much of the forests on Montserrat are recovering to their former glory. The forests are once again home to enormous fig trees with giant buttress roots. And plum rose trees, which bear abundant pink flowers across their branches. The pink flower parts carpet the forest floor during flowering times like a strange tropical snow. And the numbers of land animals on the island are also recovering, such as the red-footed tortoise. And many bird species, which feed and breed on the island once again, such as these cattle egrets and the pearly-eyed thrasher, the beautiful zenaida dove, the Antillean crested hummingbird, and the exquisitely patterned bridled quail dove. Some of the most important elements of Montserrat's biodiversity are the range of rain and cloud forest habitats and the wildlife they support. These include island endemics, regional endemics and other key species, including one very special bird which occurs nowhere else on earth, the shy Montserrat oriole, the territory's national bird but this endemic species was almost wiped out during the volcanic eruption. As much of their habitat was lost, but they nest again in the recovered forest. About 200 individuals survive and the population is increasing. At the time of the eruption, the massive release of ash was devastating for the coral reefs of Montserrat. The covering of choking silt almost completely killed the corals around the island. But 20 years after the eruption, the reefs have exploded back to their former glory. And today, Montserrat boasts some of the most beautiful reefs in all of the Caribbean. 
The timing of the eruptions was disastrous for one animal. A giant frog found only on Montserrat in nearby Dominica. It lived in these forests. And each night, its call would ring out across Montserrat's hills. It was named the mountain chicken because it was one of the largest frogs in the world, up to 21 centimetres in length, and it made good eating as a substitute for chicken. The volcanic explosion killed large numbers of the mountain chickens. Then, tragically, most or possibly all of the remaining population was devastated by the introduction of deadly chytrid fungus in 2009 and the streams filled with dead mountain chickens. The forests of Montserrat fell silent. Following the Kitchard outbreak in 2009, the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust, in partnership with the government of Montserrat's Department of Environment, evacuated 50 mountain chickens and established a biosecure safety net population in three zoos in Europe. The frogs have bred successfully in captivity, and many of the captive bred specimens have been microchipped and introduced back into the wild to help re-establish the natural populations on Montserrat. I was fortunate to join the conservation team to observe their efforts to monitor the population in the wild. Yeah, they got one. They got one? So what gender is this one? So this mountain chicken's a male. Uh, you can tell that from the breeding spurs on the thumbs. Um, he's also got this nice big buccal sac he's been calling earlier on this evening, which is showing signs of breeding, which is great news for us. What's the population like here now? We're looking at about um, maybe 150, 100 individuals. There used to be thousands of frogs in the forest here in Montserrat, but since the chytrids um, hit and come through, we've had major losses. So this particular, um, this particular male is very special. Are they breeding now, or, or is it a remnant population? How are they doing in the wild? Well, I mean, this animal is showing signs of breeding. We haven't seen any juveniles in the wild as yet, but this is a really good sign. Um, we suspect that there will be more females around. So he's looking healthy. There are no visible signs of chytrid on this animal, which is really important. That's great. And how, what's the future, do you think? The future's looking good. Once we're still finding animals like this surviving in the wild and with the other work that we're doing with the release animals here in Montserrat, um, if he continues to survive without showing any signs of fungus and if we can get these guys to breed, then the future's looking really good. I hope so very much. Thanks for showing it to us. Through these dedicated efforts, it's hoped that the call of the mountain chicken will one day ring out across the forests of Montserrat once more. The story of Montserrat is one of incredible resilience and recovery of both people and nature. For the volcanic eruptions since 1995 were not the first time devastation struck the island. Many earlier eruptions have taken place during past millennia and within just the last 300 years, much of the forests of the lowlands of the island were cut down for sugar plantations the ruins of those sugar mills still stand. But since abandonment in the 19th century, the forests have recovered. This island, with all its diverse wildlife and resourceful people, show that recovery can take place in the face of adversity. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini-documentaries possible.